الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا كبت للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويتهدركم تهديرا صدق الله العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله حضرة اللهم فاضل جلیل عالم نبیل محقی کے زمان حضرت علامہ کاری حافظ شاہد صاحب جناب زینت القراء حضرت علامہ مولانا کاری سفوت شہزاد صاحب my respectable elders dear brothers beloved youngsters honorable sisters that may be listening السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ As you are aware, we have gathered here on the occasion of the monthly Giyarbi Sharif. The monthly Giyarbi Sharif is nothing but an opportunity to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is nothing but an opportunity to discuss the beautiful deen of Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم. Learning the deen, spreading the deen, attaining knowledge is amongst the best forms of ibadah. I don't know if I mentioned it last time we were together, but Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said that Tadarusul ilmi sa'atam min al-layli khayrun min ihya'iha That to spend a moment of the night in the pursuit of knowledge رات کا ایک قصہ علم کی تلاش میں گزارنا to spend a moment of the night in the pursuit of knowledge is better than staying away the whole night engaged in worship of Allah سبحانہ یعنی کہ علم کی تلاش علم کی جستجو رات کے ایک قصے میں علم کی جستجو پوری رات جاگ کر نوافل پڑھنے سے بہتر ہے سبحانہ اللہ اس ایکٹ of attaining knowledge, learning the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the reward we will definitely get. So the moment that we spend in pursuit of this endeavor is better than the entire night. We are dedicating this to Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilal, to show our affiliation to that grand Shaykh of the Awliya. You see, sometimes people think, why do you do Gyanvi Sharif? Is the purpose of Gyanvi Sharif uh, Langar is the purpose of Gyanvi Sharif to get together, to sit in the mosque, in the warmth of the mosque. That is not the purpose of the Gyanvi Sharif. And there is no need to have a debate about Gyanvi Sharif. You know, people think you need to debate those people who consider it to be bid'ah. And then people go out of the way and they stretch the arguments unnecessarily. If someone does say Gyanvi Sharif is a bid'ah, all you need to say to them is what does the Gyanvi Sharif consist of? Gyanvi Sharif is nothing but the pursuit of knowledge. Is the pursuit of knowledge a bid'ah? If the answer to that is yes, it is a bid'ah, then they have gone against the Quran and the Sunnah. Because the Quran and the Sunnah say it is essential. Talabul ilmi faridatul ala kulli muslimin wa muslimate. The Quran and Sunnah are clear on the fact that it is obligatory for the Ummah to attain knowledge. So they cannot say the pursuit of knowledge is a bid'ah. Therefore they have to say the pursuit of knowledge is something which is recommended, something which is mustahsan, something for which you will be rewarded immensely for. The question then arises, the pursuit of knowledge through the Giyarmi Sharif cannot be a bid'ah because the ultimate objective is to attain knowledge. And this is how my grandfather, the great muhaddis of Sialkot, Hazrat Alama Hafiz Muhammad Alam Sialkoti Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, that's how he used to explain it. 
وہ فرماتے تھے کہ گیارہویں شریف پہ ملازمے اور مجادلے کی کوئی ضرورت نہیں ہے آپ حضرات نے سنا ہوگا جو بزرگ ہیں وہ فرماتے تھے کہ گیارہویں شریف کیا ہے یہ صرف اور صرف تدارس علم ہے یہ ایک تبلیغی اجتماع ہے جس میں خال اللہ اور خال رسول کی صدائے بلاد ہو جب اس کا مقصد اور اس کے انگریڈینٹس یہ ہے نو مسلم کین آبجیکٹ ٹو دس اینڈ دا گیارہویں شریف از اے کمیمریشن اف دا گریٹ سینٹ شیخ عبد القادر الجیلانی قاری صاحب واز مینشننگ دا سٹیٹمنٹ اف شیخ عبد القادر الجیلانی وی ہی سٹیٹڈ دیٹ مائی فٹ is on the neck of every single wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this you establish that as far as greatness is concerned, there is no one greater than Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani after him. Now this greatness of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, the scholars of the Sawwuf, like the Imams of Ahlul Sunnah, they state that this status that Shaykh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani is holding is in the absence of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. When Imam Mahdi alayhi salam will arrive, this status will transfer again to Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Because this status began with Shaykh and the Imam of all the awliya, the door to the city of knowledge, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Then this status passed on to Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Then it passed on to Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Then it passed on to Imam Baqir and Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Then it passed on to Imam Baqir alayhi salam. Then it passed on to Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Then it passed on to Imam Muta Qasim alayhi salam. Then it passed on to Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam. Then it passed on to Imam Muhammad al-Jawbad alayhi salam. Then it passed on to Imam Ali Nagi alayhi salam. And then it passed on to Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam. After Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam passed away, this status was transferred to Ghosay Azam radiallahu ta'ala. So in reality, Ghosay Azam, is holding the status in the absence of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. The Imams of the Ahlul Bayt are the inheritors of this status from Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, it becomes essential for us to know the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, to know who they are, to know what they are, so that we can have an, a relationship of love and a relationship of dedication and a relationship of slavehood and mastery with those great Imams. And you people of Peterborough are worthy of praise. And the Muharrik of this uh, series, I understand Mufti Abdul Qadir Sahib, is worthy of immense praise. If he was here, I would want to kiss his forehead because you are doing what no one else in the Sunni community in the whole of the UK is not, is not doing. You are doing what no one else is doing. You are enabling everyone to understand who the Imam the Fahdul Bayt are. And why is this important? This is important because my messenger and your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam stated, Inni tarikun fikum utpakalain, ma in tamassaktum bihi ma lam tadillu ba'di, kitabullahi wa itrati. The messenger of God said, oh people, I leave behind for you, Two significant things. Two significant things. If you hold on to them, you will never ever go astray. And what are those two, two significant things? That is the book of Allah and the family of Rasulullah. So it's essential for us. It is for the others to know the community to whom we are required to do tamassu. And there is no one beyond the Imams of Ahlul Bayt who deserve our tamassu. Inshallah, when we have the uh, penultimate or the concluding ceremony, we will elaborate on this further. These are people about whom Alama Shahid Sahib was mentioning the verse of Allah and very eloquently with a lot of use of ilmul kalam. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُتَحِيدَكُمْ تَتْحِيدَ These are people that have been purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. About these people, you know there's a lot of dispute. Who is the Ahlul Bayt that are purified? Who is included? Who is not included? 
We don't need to go into a debate. There is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and personally there is no uh, nothing wrong with believing the Ummahatul Mu'mineen are from the Ahlul Bayt, the uh, Hassanan Karimain are from the Ahlul Bayt, Imam Ali alayhi salam is from the Ahlul Bayt, Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayhi are from the Ahlul Bayt. They are all from the Ahlul Bayt. But the hadith points to something significant. When this verse was revealed, so the dispute, don't worry about the debate. They are all part of the verse. They are all part of the verse, alhamdulillah. Okay, but when this verse was revealed, Allah's messenger invited Ali, he invited Fatima to Zahra, he invited Hassan, and he invited Hussein. And over all of them, he placed a blessed flow. And then he uttered words which are worthy of inscribing in the heart of every single believer. Oh. He said, Allahumma ha'ula'i ahlu bayti. Oh Allah, these people are my ahlul bayt. Oh Allah, remove all forms of rich, all forms of impurity from them and purify them totally and utterly. Subhanallah. The use of the words of the messenger of God was Allahumma ha'ula'i. What were they? Allahumma ha'ula'i ahlu bayti. The word ha'ula is ism ishara. What is it? Ism ishara. Ism ishara. When you want to say this, or when you want to say that, you use ism ishara. This is a glass. The word this <coughs> is a ishara. ism ishara. The rule of the Arabic language is when the ism ishara comes as a musnad ilay, comes as a muqtada. Let's explain what a muqtada and khabar is first. Zayd is an alim. Zayd is an alim. Zaydun alimun. In this sentence, the word Zayd is the muqtada. The word alimun is the khabar. Okay? Zayd is the subject. Alimun is the predicate, the subject and the predicate. The muqtada and the khabar together becomes al jumlatul ismiya. They become a nominal sentence. What do they become? Nominal a sentence. nominal sentence. The rule of Arabic language is when the muqtada is ism ishara. When the muqtada or the musnad ilay is ism ishara, the reason why it is ism ishara is because the hukam establishes on it like it establishes on no one else. Subhanallah. Okay? When the muqtada is ism ishara, the hukam establishes on it like it establishes on no one else. For example, if I say, Hadar rajulu alimun. This man is an alim. The hukam of alim establishes on him like it establishes on no one else. Because you have used ism ishara as the muqtada. In the same way, the Prophet of God says, Allahumma ha'ula'i ahlu bayti. Oh Allah, these are my ahlul bayt. It means that the way these are my ahlul bayt, no one else is my ahlul bayt. Subhanallah. Allahumma ha'ula'i ahlul bayti. Allahumma ha'ula'i ahlul bayt. That's why you say these are the panjitan part. These are the panjitan part. All the household of Rasulullah is part. Ummahatul Mu'mineen are part. But the tathib that is established through the Prophet of God for these, it's incomparable for everyone else. Allahumma ha'ula'i ahlul bayt. Oh Allah, these are my ahlul bayt. And from these people, from this pure household, from this purest of the purest household came the Imams who we are going to discuss today. Subhanallah. Who we are going to discuss today. We are going to discuss the 10th and the 11th Imam of Ahlul Bayt. Last time I came, I could read without glasses. Now, times are such that I have to use glasses. Now, with regards to the Dikr of Ahlul Bayt, I want to mention something else. Unfortunately, in our community, it has become a problem to mention the Ahlul Bayt. 
जब जिक्र अहल बैत होता है कई लोग ऐसे भी हैं जो कहते हैं सहाबा का क्या बनेगा और उन्हें तकलीफ होती है कि अहल बैत का जिक्र क्यों हो रहा है I came across a clip on the social media. A knot khan was reciting a knot. In that knot, he was talking about the love one should have for Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. He says, Sara jad rus jai Ali na bhi se. Right? He was saying that. A man, instead of praising him for it, instead of saying, Waqay, why? Because about no one else, about no other man, did the Prophet of God say, La yuhibbuka illa mu'min, wa la yubhiduka illa munafi. There is only one man, only one man, about which the Prophet of God said, O oh people, loving him is a sign of iman, and hating him is a sign of hypocrisy. There is no other man, about which the Messenger of God sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that. So bearing that in mind, obviously it excludes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when the Shahir is saying, Sara jad rus jaye, rus jaye, ali na ruse, he is doing nothing but explaining this hadith of Rasulullah. La yuhibbuka illa mu'min, wa la yubghizuka illa munafiq. But the tribulation that has afflicted this community is such that a person felt this as a threat to the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. The tribulation that has afflicted, and I choose my words very carefully, the tribulation that has afflicted the Ummah today is that a person felt necessary to do rad of him. The question arises, where does this stem from? This stems from the fear of being called a Shia when you say, Ali, 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 they say you are a Shia. Because this stems from the fear of being a Shia, you need to take inspiration from the words of Imam Ash-Shafi'i radiyallahu ta'ala Subhanallah. And what did Imam Ash-Shafi'i say? He said, In thana hubbu ali muhammadin rifzan fal yushhidi taqalani anni rafidi. He said, if loving the Ahlul Bayt, if saying Ali Ali, if mentioning the Ahlul Bayt, is a form of rift if that is shi'iyat he said then let the whole mankind and let the whole jinn kind let the whole creation bear witness that shafi'i is a rafazi shafi'i is a rafazi subhanallah so allah akbar ya rasulullah ya ali akbar so therefore, it's imperative for the Sunni community to take this heritage and take it forward into the future generation. Because we are a community, when we mention the best of creation, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu of the Nulbashar ba'd al-Anbiya, none of us will have a problem ki Ali ka kya banega. In the same way, when we mention Ali ibn Abi Talib, we do not need to worry Abu Bakr ka kya banega because they are all attributed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Abu Bakr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, do such a thing, do such a thing that Abu Bakr is not the same as Abu Bakr. جب سیدنا عمر کا ذکر کرو ایسے ذکر کرو کہ سیدنا عمر ابن الخطاب کے بعد کوئی ہے ہی نہیں اس محبت کے ساتھ ذکر کرو اور ڈوب کر ذکر کرو اور بے فکر ہو کر ذکر کرو اسی طرح جب اہل بیت کا ذکر کرو when you mention the اہل بیت you do not need to mention anything else alongside them because your purpose is to dedicate your speech to the اہل بیت in another way سنیو میں ایک اور پرابلم جو دیکھنے میں آتی ہے کہ you see if in front of the Wahhabis you mention the messenger of God صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم and I have personal experience of this I have personal experience of this in my establishment during the Maulid season you know I started talking about Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم in my Jumabayat 
And you know, when you start talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you cannot stop. So Rabbi Ulawwal went, we're talking about Rasulullah. Rabbi Uthani came, we're talking about Rasulullah. Jumada al-Ula came, we're still talking about Rasulullah A person who had illness in the heart, he came to me and said, Imam, what is this? Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad? You talk about nothing but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I said, that is an indication of the illness of your heart. Because had Muhammad not been, nothing would have been. Subhanallah. Had Muhammad not been, Adam would not have been. Okay? So when you talk about Rasulullah and the fadila of Rasulullah, people think that Tawheed is in the What do they think? That the Tawheed is in some form of danger. In the same way, in our communities, when was the last time you guys had a lecture on Tawheed? Never. Huh? When was the last time we arranged a Tawheed seminar? When the Sunnis, when amongst the Sunnis, someone talks about Tawheed, I know people, a scholar was talking about Tawheed, and people actually stopped him, Baskar Boto, again, Loki Babi Ho Jandi. And the Tawheed, Samajne Se Gar Loki Babi Ho Gaye, then Beda Ega Da Ke. He Ke, when we talk about Tawheed, People think, oh no, 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 you have to not talk about Tawheed so much. Tawheed is the pinnacle of faith. Tawheed is what every single prophet of God came to teach. From Adam alayhi salam, to Nuh alayhi salam, to Idris alayhi salam, to Musa alayhi salam, to Isa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. The primary thing they came to teach was nothing but La ilaha illallah. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we as Sunnis need to arrange the Heath seminars and not worry that talking about the Heath will somehow diminish the Risalat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are problems, you know, because we've got labels now and attaching labels is equivalent to institutionalizing religion. When you institutionalize religion, you go away from the pristine state of the deen that came through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So when you talk about Ahlul Bayt, it is not meaning that the status of the Sahaba is in danger. When you talk about the Sahaba, it does not mean that the status of Ahlul Bayt is in danger. When you talk about Tawheed, Risalat is not in danger. And when you talk about Risalat, Tawheed is not in danger. These four things combined are our direction to salvation until the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Inshallah. Now the 11th, 10th Imam. I talked last time about the 8th Imam. Imam Ali. What was his name? MashaAllah. Imam Ali. Rida alayhi salam. You would have had someone talk about his son, Imam Muhammad al Jawad alayhi salam. Today I'm talking about the grandson of Imam Ali and the great grandson of Imam Ali. The first of those, the tenth Imam of the Ahlul Bayt, is Ali ibn Muhammad al Jawad ibn Ali Rada. He is Ali who is the son of Muhammad al Jawad who is the son of Ali Rida, who is the son of Musa Kazim, who is the son of Jafar al-Sadiq, who is the son of Muhammad al-Baqir, who is the son of Zayn al-Abidin, who is the son of Hussein, who is the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi wasalam. Subhanallah. So he traces his lineage through these great imams to Ali ibn Abi Talib, the door to the city of knowledge. He was born three miles outside of Medina in a small community. Like, you know, in cities you have different areas. Like in Derby, we have Little Over, Mikal Over, etc. What do you have in Peterborough? Bratton Woods? Yes. Is that an area? Yeah. Bratton. And what else? Etc. Yeah. Etc. Et Just imagine Peterborough is the city, and then you have the outskirts of Peterborough. Imam Muhammad Ibn Imam Ali ibn Muhammad, Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam, he was born in the outskirts of Al Madinatul Munawwara. And he was born in the month of Zilhaj, a blessed month, in 212 Hijri after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So 212 years after the Prophet of God emigrated to Medina, Imam Ali Naki salam was born. Before he was nine years old, at the age of eight, his blessed father, Muhammad al-Jawad alayhi salam was martyred and he passed away. At the young age of eight years old, at the young age of eight years old, Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam assumed the responsibility of leaving the Ummah. Subhanallah. You can say, how can an eight-year-old leave the Ummah? How old are you? 62. 12. No, not you. <laughs> I thought 62. <laughs> Eight years old. You're 12, huh? Four years. 11. At the age of eight years, he became the spiritual inheritor of the teachings of Rasulullah. Can you imagine how big a responsibility that is? To carry forward the message of Rasulullah. Inshallah, next time we will talk about the concept of Imamat. Imamat hai kya? We'll talk about it some other time, inshallah. But that's the biggest responsibility that can go on anyone's shoulder. What he became at the age of eight is that he became the spiritual inheritor of the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You may ask a question, at the age of eight, how can a kid of eight years assume the leadership of the ummah? It's a valid question, isn't it? I want you to hold on to this question because the answer to the question will come when we talk about his son. Okay? So at the age of eight, he assumed the leadership of the Ummah. As he became the Imam of the Muslimin and the Imam of the Mu'mineen, he stood up against the tyranny of the Abbasid rulers of that time. He stood up against the tyranny and the oppression and the rule of the Abbasid rulers of the time. Because he was able to stand firm against them, the Abbasid rulers feared his standing in the community, so they exiled him to a place north of Baghdad, known now as Samarra. They exiled him. What did they do? Exile. You know what exile means? Exile means is when the ruler says, you are a problem for me, you can't live in Peterborough, you will now have to go and live in France or something. Okay, so he was made to move along with his family because he was standing up for the truth. That shows the power that he had. Huh? Because the people that had all the armies to their disposal, the people that had all the resources to their disposal, this Marde Kalandar was such a threat to them that they had no choice but to exile him to Samarra north of Baghdad. And Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam in that place continued to bless the Ummah with the guidance and teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Until he passed away in the, on the third day of Rajab in 254 Hijri. He was born in 212 Hijri and he passed away in 254 Hijri. What a young age, huh? How old is that? 42 years old. At the age of 42 years, this Imam was poisoned like his forefathers and he went to the Mala'ul A'la in the company of the Mala'ika and the Anbiya and the Sali. But what is this Imam all about? Instead of going through what the scholars have written about this Imam, I will mention two statements and two incidents from his life that I have found in Sunni books. You see, and the problem here, okay, other than Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Imam Zainul Abideen, Imam Baqir, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, other than these Imams, the Sunni literature is almost bereft of the zikr of these Aymah of Ahlul Bayt. So because you have access to a lot of literature by the Rafini school of thought, you need to be careful in what you take and what you don't take. So the safest path is to look at what our Sunni scholars have stated about this great Imam. And looking for that, 
I can tell you because I don't like to come and present to you and do a takrid and say subhanallah and do nara and off we go. And then people say, oh, yeah, I have one I see what a great takrid it is. No, I want to give you something because you have called me, it's my responsibility now. So I searched hard and I searched far until I found something from the Sunni sources about these Imams that we can take into our lives inshallah. And that's a tragedy of our times. Uh, my teacher, Hazrat uh, al Mufti Ghulam Mansur Jamati Sahib, he started to write about Imam the Fahl al He wrote about Imam Hassan, he wrote about Imam Hussein, he wrote about Imam Zain al-Abidin, Imam Baqir, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for him to pass away and he died. So someone in the Sunni community needs to write about these Imams. And that, I can tell you, will be the greatest thing you can present to Rasulullah on the day of the Subhanallah. When the Messenger of God will say, Kya kiya tune? And you say, Ya Rasulullah, Aap ki uladi am jata Subhanallah. Aap ki uladi am jata zikri, Aap ki ya. So maybe someone in the Sunni community needs to take this. Someone competent and tell, let the community know about these Imam. Now in Imam Az-Zahabi's Tariqa Islam, Okay, Imam Shamsuddin al dahabi He was a contemporary of Ibn Taymiyyah. In fact, he was also a student of Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah. He is renowned for his work on Asma'ul Rijal, on looking at the biographies of the people that narrate Hadith. In his book, Tariqul Islam, he mentions something about Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam which shows that he is nothing but the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Because Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam is what? The door to the city of knowledge. What is Ali? He is the door to the city of knowledge. Whenever you mention Ali, remember this, he is what? The door to the city of knowledge. This may be our Lord. Now, the fact, this narration shows how he took from his forefather Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam in terms of knowledge. So he says, Anna al-Mutawakkil i'tala. Mutawakkil became severely ill. Mutawakkil was the Khalifa at the time of Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam. Taqala la in bara'du la atasadda kanna bi dhananeem kathiran. He said, if I get better from my illness, I will give sadaka of lots of dinari. I will give sadaka of lots of dinars. What's the word he used in Arabic? Kathir. What did he use? Kathir. Okay, I will give sadaka of a lot of dinars. Now, when he became better, he went to the fukaha. And he asked, how many dinars do I have to give in charity? What did he ask them? How many dinars do I have to give in charity? Because what did he say? Did he specify a number? What's the word he used? Kathiratan. What did he use? Kathiratan. None of the fukaha of the time were able to give him a satisfactory answer. Some would say 10, some would say 15. Why? There's no dalil from the Quran and Sunnah for what they were saying. There is no dalil from the Quran and Sunnah for what they were saying. فَلَمَّا أُوْفِيَا جَمَعَ الْفُقَهَا فَسَأَلَهُ مَنْ ذَلِكَ فَاخْتَلَفُ So then what happens? He became better and Zabi says, he gathered all of the fukaha and he said, Ya fukaha, tell me how much do I have to give in order to fulfill my oath? Kitne mele de liya paise? Kyunki usne kasam kya uthai thi? Main kaseer. Main kya karunga? Kaseer dinar Allah ki raah mein sadka karunga. He is asking the fukaha, ha bhai, aap batayi kitne kaseer kya hai? So ye kehte hai. Dusra kehte hai, nahi, 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 kaseer ye nahi hai, kaseer ye hai. Another one says, no, 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 kaseer is this. So a dispute was established. No one could give the leel from the Quran or the Sunnah. And then, Tabatha. Yani Ali ila Abil Hassan al Askari. He then sent a message. He called on Abul Hassan 
Ali Laki alayhi salam. Tasa'alahu and he asked him. Fakala, ya tasaddaku bi thalatatin wa samanina dinarun. He said, you will give sadaqah for 83 dinars. You will give sadaqah for 83 dinars. The Qawm, the Fuqaha were surprised. They said, Min ayna lahu hada? Where do you get this from? That he has to give 83 dinars. Okay? And he said, Li anna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala yakulu, Lakad al nasara kumullahu fi mawatina kasira. Lakad al nasara kumullahu fi mawatina kasira. وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنٍ إِذْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ In Surah At-Tawbah, verse number 25, Allah says to the Messenger of God, that Allah helped you مَوَادٍ كَثِيرٍ In كَثِيرٍ instances. Allah helped you in كَثِيرٍ instances. And then He said, فَرَوَى أَهْلُنَا Jami'an, anna al-mawatina wa saraya kanat thalathatun wa thamanina mawtina. He said, our imams, our forefathers, all of them have narrated that the number of places or the number of expeditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 83. So when Allah is saying, لَكَنْ نَصَرَكُمْ اللَّهُ فِي مَوَاتِنَا كَثِيرَةٍ He is saying, I helped you in 83 places. So the translation or the tafsir of kathiratin according to the verse of the Quran is 83. Therefore, because you said you will give the nanir kathiratin, you will have to give 83 dinars in the way of Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is the knowledge that was transferred from his father, his grandfather, great grandfather, great grandfather, great grandfather to the seed door. And that door leads to where? Muhammad al Rasulullah. Another instance that shows his greatness. And this, Wallahi, when I read this, Allah, Allah, the spiritual bus that you get from reading this is the most amazing thing possible. SubhanAllah. During his time, and this is narrated by Ibn Qasir in Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya. So no non-Sunni sources. No non-Sunni sources. Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya, who has written that? Ibn Qasir. Al-Wafi, Bil Wafiyyat, who has written that? Salahuddin Halil Ibn Aybak. Again, a scholar who died in 764 Hijri. They mentioned that someone made a complaint to Mutawakkil. Someone made a complaint to? Who was Mutawakkil again? He was the Abbasid Khalifa of the time. Who was he? The Abbasid Khalifa of the time. Someone made a complaint about Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam that in his house he has stored a lot of ammunition, a lot of weaponry, a lot of things to do with warfare. And in his house, you will find a lot of letters that have between him and dissenters that are planning to overthrow the Khalifa. So what was the complaint? That in his house, what will you find? Ammunition. Ammunition. You will find weapons. And what does he plan to do with those weapons? He plans to lead an uprising against the Khalifa, who probably deserved an uprising against him. Okay, due to the uh, insolence and the zulm that was being perpetrated in the community at that time. But notwithstanding that, this complaint was made to the Khalifa. The Khalifa sent his army to the house of Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam. And the narration is فَهَجَمُوا مَنْزِلَهُ عَلَىٰ غَفْلَةٍ at, at night when Imam Ali alayhi salam wasn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, aware, they raided his house. And when they raided his house, what did they find? Allah. 
فوجدوه في بيت مغلق وعليه مدرعة من شعر وعلى رأسه ملحقة من سوف وهو مستقبل القبلة يترمم بآيات من القرآن في الوعد والرحيم ليس بينه وبين الأرض بساط إلا الرمل والحسن says they found him and what was he doing when they found him they found him to be wearing cloth made out of hair huh? the most basic clothing you can find and they found him with a covering over his head and what was he doing he was reading verses of the quran subhanallah he was reading verses of the quran and what was he focusing on he was focusing on the verses of wa'ad and wa'id wa'ad is what wa'ad is a verse like ya ayyatukan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan warijatan fadkhuli fi ibadi wa dhuli jannati wa'ad is black tidings from allah a verse like where allah says Oh, soul that is content with me and I am content with you. Enter into my servitude. Enter amongst my slaves. And enter paradise. Verses like You know, describing the state of the people of Jannah on that day, their faces will be full of happiness. They will be on reclining you know, uh, 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 the thrones, delighting in the pleasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he was reciting the verses of Wa'ad, he was also reciting the verses of Wa'id. What are the verses of Wa'id? Verses like, يَوَضُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ إِذِمْ بِبَنِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَأَخِيهِ وَفَسِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِي وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِي you know, the verses that uh, describe the day of judgment and how on the day of judgment no one's excuse will be accepted. Where on the day of judgment the mother will run away from the, fa the son, the son will run away from the father, the best friends will run away from one another. On that day each one of them will wish that sacrifice everyone else, sacrifice someone else but save me. They will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say, no, on that day the fire will overtake them. So these are the verses of Wahid. So there he is reciting the verses of Wa'ad and verses of Wahid. And how is he doing it? The words of the narration of Laysa Bainahu wa bain al ardi bisatun illa rah. You know, he's not sitting on the most comfortable carpet you can imagine. Okay. Who's watched Yunus Emre? A few guys. No. You know, can you imagine some dargas kind of thing? You know, imagine someone worshipping and you've got the candlelight there and you've got the most comfortable, the most lush seating and people are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was not of that age. He says he wasn't seated on a carpet. He wasn't seated in comfort. He said between his body and the ground, there was nothing but dust. Sitting on the bare ground. Allah. Sitting on the bare ground. Fajr par bed. Arsh par bed ke nahi Allah milta. Fajr par bed ke nahi. Fajr par bed ke nahi. Mitti bhi bhasi. Or Allah ki tila aya ki tila usla bhe. So they pick him up. As they find him, they pick him up and they take him to the Khalifa. When they take him to the Khalifa, what is the Khalifa engaged in? The Khalifa is engaged in drinking alcohol along with his companions. So he seats him next to himself and the narration says, kasa. He says, here, you also drink. And what does the Imam say? He says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Ma khamara lahmi wa dami kattu fa'fini anhu. He says, O Amir al Mu'mineen, never 
since my birth has my body ever been intoxicated, so therefore excuse me from this evil. He excuses himself from the evil of drinking. And Mary, being Mary, and then what happens? The Khalifa then says, okay, if you're not going to drink, I'm not going to let you spoil my party. So he said, if you're not going to drink, go and sing some shahidi for me. Do what? Sing some shahidi for me. Sing some poems for me. And it was customary for them to have alcohol and, and then they would have poems recited and they would recite about the delights of wine and the beauty of women, etc. He said, why don't you sing a poem for me? Why don't you recite some poetry for me? And Imam Ali Nafi alayhi salam said, I am not I don't have, you know, uh, an abundant inclination towards poetry. But he said, no, I insist you recite something. And then Imam Ali Daki alayhi salam recited something. What did Imam Ali Daki alayhi salam recite? I want to share that with you. Imam Ali Daki alayhi salam said, Batu ala kulalil ajbali dahrusuhum. Batu ala kulalil ajbali dahrusuhum. Ghalbul rijali fama agnakhumul kulal. The word kulal is a imadun a midatun turfa'u bihal tabum anil ard. Or it is the jama of kilal which is kushuful turfa'u bihal kuruhu minal ard. Kulal, what do bars mean? What do you 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 mean? Kulal, what do you mean? are the things, the instruments, or the pillars that people use to raise the kings and the honorable majesties. Okay? So, he used that word in his shairi to give a certainly different meaning. He said, Batu. Batu ala kudali ajbali tahrusuhum hulbar rijali. He says that people spend their nights on top of the mountains. What do they do? They spend their nights on the top of the mountains and rijali. they have the strongest of people protecting them. Huh? He said, oh people, you spend your nights on top of the mountains having the warriors protecting you from a For when the time comes, those mountain tops do you no benefit and they cannot protect you from death. <laughs> when the time for death comes, you can be in fortified castles. The malad of the death will not be diverted. They said, you people, people spend their nights in lofty palaces, guarded by the soldiers. People cannot reach within 50 meters of them. So strong is their protection. But he says, when the time comes, those mountain tops do not protect them in any form or shape. Wastunzilu fada izzin an ma'akili him he says, from their high seats of honor, from their high seats of honor, from their thrones, from their lush palaces, from their lofty castles, they are made to descend after having attained honor from their lofty seats. And what happens when they are made to descend? They are placed in nothing but a ditch. What a despicable descending that is. What a despicable descending that is. 
तो हम मोहल्लों में नहीं दफनाते जब मोल का बकरत आता है एक जरा है उसमें सब तो डाला जाता है बेसमान नजर ये कितना अजीबो गरीब कितना बुरा है उनका गिरना है कहां से कहां गिरे एंड देन ही सेज नादाहुम सारिहुन मिन बहदि मा कुबिरु अइनल असिरतु व तैजानु वल कुललु ही सेज व्हेन दे आर इन द ग्रेव्स नाउ इमेजिन ही इज बीइंग मैरी एंड नाउ ही इज हियरिंग दिस ही सेज व्हेन दे आर इन द ग्रेव्स समवन calls out to them and he says where is the royal throne where are the royal thrones on which you used to sit where is the royal crown that used to be on your head and where are the lavish garments that you used to wear because you will not have that crown you will not have that throne you will only be buried in the most simplest of clothes and then he says that same caller when he says to them where is your crown where is your garments where is everything he will say ain al wujuh allati kanat mun'amah min dunha tutrab al astar wal kinal he will say where are those beautiful you know where are those naive where are those honorable faces you know mun'am is someone who is maysur al aish husnul hal hadi ul bal he is someone who has the easiest of lives so what who has the easiest of lives husnul hal has the best state in this dunya wa hadi ul bal and his mind is free from any worry whatsoever so the person who's calling out in the grave or the grave itself will say aina wujuhul muna'ama where are these faces that are no worry on the earth Where are those faces that had every blessing on this earth? Where are the faces? Min dunia tu drabul astaru wal kilalu. Where are those faces in front of whom you had beautiful parda, beautiful veil, so that they would not be affected by the weather and by the climate? And where are those faces when they would sleep? They would have mosquito nets, so that not a mosquito would come and bite them. and then he said fa afsaha al qabr anhum hina sa'alahu when the qabr will ask this fa afsaha al qabr the qabr itself will in the most eloquent and the most open way speak out when that qabr becomes bad for them hina sa'alahu when it becomes bad for them that qabr will speak out tilka al wujuh alayha dud yaqtatinu that those faces that you asked about that live the life of lavish blessings these faces are now such that the worms and the insects are doing nothing but eating them destroying them and then imam ali nabi alayhi salam said qad tala ma akalu dahran wa ma sharibu He said, "A long time has passed that you have eaten the blessings of Allah, and you have drunk the blessings of Allah. A long time has passed. For us, Bahu, Baada, Tulil, Akli, Kad, Bukilu. These people that are in the graves now, and they used to be so uh, lavish and so uh, pompous. The worms are now eating their bodies." They would have mosquito nets, or a mosquito wouldn't bite them. They would have curtains, veils over their faces, so they wouldn't be affected by the uh, weather. He says, "Now these very faces, these very people, a long time they spent on the earth, eating and drinking from what Allah has given them. Now the time has come, but the two little ugly. After a long time of eating and consuming, now the time has come for them to be consumed." Subhan. Now the time has come for them to be consumed. When Imam Ali Lafi alayhi salam recited this poetry, Al Mutawakkil and everyone around him started to fear for Imam Ali Lafi. The the narrator narrator says that people started to fear that what will the Khalifa now do to him? Because Imam Ali Lafi opened up the book to him. The Al Khalifa, this is you today. 
this will you be you tomorrow. Take heed and do something about your actions. They thought, how can someone say that to the Khalifa? They felt that he will now be punished for what he has said. They really, really felt that. But Imam Ali Naki was from the family of Rasulullah and the Prophet of Allah said the best jihad is to speak the word of truth in the tyrant, in front of the tyrant's ruler. And the Prophet of God said the best of people, Sayyidu Shuhada, after the Shuhada, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, the Rajulun Yuktalu, Hina Amar Abil Ma'rufi wa Naha Anil Munkar. In the Sultan al in Ulkuma Kala Islam, the Prophet of God said, the best of Shuhada is the one, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, and the one who is killed because he speaks a word of truth in front of a tyrant. He knew how great a status it is. Even if he is Shaheed, he is Abdul Shuhada. Sayyid al Shuhada. Now, you know why we call Imam Hussein alayhi salam Sayyid al Shuhada? Subhanallah. He more be getting Sayyid al Shuhada, kya kati ho? अरे भाई सरकार ने फरमाया है जो जालिम जाबिर के सामने डट जाए और उस और डटने की वजह से कत्ल कर दिया जाए वो सही दुश्मन होगा सुभान अल्लाह इससे इमाम मुसैन अल्लाह इस्लाम के बड़ा एग्जांपल कौन हो सकता है कई लोग कहते हैं ना बोलते कहते हैं सही दुश्मन होगा कैसे होगे ऐसे होगे सरकार ने बुलाया but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done something else. When Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam finished, the Khalifa was doing nothing but cry. Full of tears when he realized where he is heading and what he has been doing. And he said, Ya Abul Hassan, Qad lajjanta minna kuluban qasiyah. O Abul Hassan, O Ali Naki, you have made the hardest of our hearts the soft. This is Imam Ali Naki Subhanallah. And this is the Imam that we are celebrating and commemorating today. Subhanallah. If we want to take forward the teaching of Imam Ali Naki salam, then look at his knowledge, look at his look at his piety, look at his tatma, and remember these poems that he recited in front of the tyrant. Therein concludes our on Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam. You know when you mentioned that we were talking about two, and I thought Sunnis have written nothing about it. How am I going to fill the time talking about two? One hour, no one's written anything about it. But Alhamdulillah, when I'm researching, when I'm looking at things, I'm thinking maybe we need two weeks to talk about these two. SubhanAllah. So let us now look at Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam. Is somebody up in the in the last five minutes, we will talk about Imam Hassan al Askari and we will end from where we started. We will end from where we started. As far as Imam Hassan al Askari is concerned, his name was Hassan ibn Ali and he traces his lineage to, like his father, to Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. This is the Zubiyyat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Hassan al Askari was born in 232 Hijri, in 232 Hijri, and he passed away in uh, 260 Hijri. Again, 232 Hijri, he's born, 260 Hijri, he passed away. 28 years old. Now, Imam Hassan al Askari. What did I begin the lecture with? What age was brilliant? SubhanAllah, well done. I think you're 24, not 54. 16. <laughs> Imam Hassan's father, Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam, how old was he when he became the Imam? How old was he? Eight years old. And I asked the question, how can an eight year old assume the leadership of the Ummah? My dear brothers, when this Imam Al Hassan Al Askari alayhi salam was nothing but a toddler, he met Bahlul Dana. Who did he meet? Bahlul Dana. Who mentions this? Ibn Hajar Makki Al Haythami in As Sawa'i Kul He says, 
he mentioned he met a Bahlul Dala and Bahlul saw him crying while other children were playing. He saw him crying, other children were doing what? They were right. playing. And Bahlul Dala thought, oh, poor kid, everyone else is playing. He probably doesn't have anything to play with. That's why he is crying. So he went to, to him and he said, I, uh, uh, you know, Ashtari laka matam He said, do you want me to buy something for you so you can play with it? And he said, Ya Khalil al-Akal, ma lil la'bi kulikna. He said, O oh, person who doesn't have the knowledge expected, we haven't been created to play. Oh. Huh? He said, we haven't been created to play. فَقَالَ لَهُ فَلِمَادَ خُلِقْنَا Then why have we been created if we haven't been created to play? He said, لِلْعِلْمِ وَالْعِبَادَ We have been created to play, to attain knowledge and worship Allah subhanahu And he said, مِنْ أَيْنَا لَكَ ذَلِكَ Where do you get this from? کہاں سے تُو نے یہ حکمت سیکھی ہے کہاں سے تُو نے یہ پتا کیا ہے and he said in qawlihi ta'ala afa hasibtum annama khalaqnakum abakan wa annakum ilayna la turja'oon he said from Allah's verse where Allah says O mankind do you think that we have created you for playing for lahab and lahab for being merry and playing about and that you will not return to us a thoughtna using this verse to analyze that we haven't been created to play. So his crying wasn't because he wasn't able to play, his crying was because what is my generation doing? They should be in the pursuit of knowledge and the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, you know, and so can you imagine why his father at age becomes the imam? Because this thoughtna at this age has this hikmat and this wisdom. And then he said, Ah, subhanallah. Then he said, okay, give me some hikmat, give me some teachings. So he gave him some teachings, and again, those are beautiful ashar, which we will leave for another time, inshallah. But whilst he was teaching him, and whilst he was reciting those ashar about the dunya not being forever, and everyone will have to meet their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whilst he was reciting those ashar, a kafiyat overtook him and he became unconscious. He fainted. When he then regained consciousness and he said, Why did you faint? You're a young man. You're a kid. You have no sin. You know, you would faint when you're talking about the dunya and the akhirah. You would faint if you worry about your sins. And he said, Allah, inni ra'aytu walidati tukidu nara bil huda al-kibar. He says, I saw my mother when she wanted to light a fire, okay? And she wanted to light the <coughs> big sticks. She would not light the big sticks until she made the smaller sticks. And I fear that I don't want to be that smaller stick on the day of Huh? At that age, but age as a toddler, this is the immense hikmat and the wisdom. So why should he not be the Imam of the Muslim? Be of the Muslim. There is one more thing. Sit down with your face up. Let's finish with this because this is amazing. And again in Aswaikul Muhukka. Because we talked uh, two instances about Imam Ali Naki, let's talk two about Imam Hassan al Askari. So then Imam Hassan al Askari doesn't say, Hey, Fadl Muhammad, kya baat thi? why did you not complete my zikr? Now, this is also narrated by Imam Ibn Hajar Makki. There came a time, and I will leave the Arabic. There came a time, and this shows the power and insight and the kalamat that Imam al Hassan al Askari had. Imam Ibn Hajar Makki writes that during his time, there came a time when the community was afflicted with drought. The community was 
afflicted with drought. And what do you do when the community is afflicted with drought according to your big books? You go and you make Salatul Istisqa. You make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send down the rain. For Amr al Khalifa, the Khalifa. Uh, you know, uh, instructed people to get together and to say the Salatul Istisqa. They made Salatul Istisqa for three days. It did not rain. Allah did not accept their dua. After three days, Faharat al Nasara wa Ma'ahum Rahim. Okay, the Christian community went out and they had with them their chief priest. Whenever they raised their hands to the ground, uh, to the sky, the sky became cloudy and it began to rain. Muslims are praying for three days. There is no rain. The Christians come out with their monk and they pray and what happens? Cloud and rain. Can you imagine? What is going through the minds of the community? People's akida is becoming mutazalzal, is being shaken. That humari dua kabool nahi hui, hum haq wale hai. Ye aate hai, Hazrat Isa ki puja karne wale, inki dua kabool ho jati hai. How is that possible? Then on the second day, some people actually left Islam and became mutad. And this became very difficult for the Muslim community. And then we when there is no one left, who do you go to? The door of Ahlul Bayt. Huh? The door of the son of Ali. So then he instructed people, oh, go and speak to Hassan Askari. And he said, Atrik Ummata Jaddika Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, Go, come to the rescue of the ummah of your uh, grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before they are destroyed. And Hassan said, okay, I will come out tomorrow and I will alleviate you from your suffering. But he said, before you expect this from me, you have imprisoned me and my companions. Free my companions first. He didn't ask for his freedom. Free my companions and I will come out. So he came out. And then he came out, the Nasara also came out. And as soon as the Rahib, as soon as the monk raised his hands to the sky, the sky became cloudy. And Imam Hassan al Askari instructed, grab his hand, and whatever is in his hand is remarkable because in his hand there is a bone of a human being. Take that from him and ask him. Now raise your hands and ask Allah Ta'ala for rain. So they went to him and they found that he had a cold in his hand. And he was raising that and the sky was becoming cloudy and it's raining. So they took the bone, they said, oh, if this is your Akira, isn't it? You're getting this because of your dua. Make dua without this. As soon as he raised his hands without that, what happened? Instead of the cloud, the sun appeared as hot as it had never been during the drought. And then Imam Hassan Askari said, Ya Mahaza, Ya Ummatam, Ya Aba Muhammad. The people said, What is this, O Abu Muhammad? He said, This is the bone of a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have in their possessions. They are using the bone of the prophet of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever an artifact of the messenger of God or a messenger of God is presented, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not turn away that dua. Allah is not answering their dua. Allah is answering the artifact of a messenger of God. Subhanallah. And they said then Imam Hassan al Askari. Subhanallah, and nisbat ki baat hai na. The hadith was nothing, but because it was attributed to a messenger of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though it was in the hands of the Christians, Allah honored that thing which was mansoob to a messenger of God, that even at the hands of the Christians, Allah ta'ala allowed it to rain. Subhanallah. Huh? And then when his falsehood was exposed, Imam Hassan Askari then made dua. And it rained like it had never rained before. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
highlighted number one the greatness of the imam the karama of the imam the knowledge of the imam the faraset of the imam and the truthfulness of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This karama did not just highlight the greatness of the imam, but this karama made sure that the people that had turned away from the deen, they then came back and said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. How many imams did that imam say? So this, my dear brothers, honorable elders, was Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam and Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam. May Allah Ta'ala on the Day of Judgment raise us as those who are the true devotees of the Ahlul Bayt. May Allah Ta'ala enable us to be raised under their banner on the Day of Judgment. And my dear brothers, honorable sisters, you guys really are worthy of congratulations. Do not stop this zikr of the Ahlul Bayt. Okay? This is the Shi'ar of the Ahlul Sunnah. It is this that will lead us into paradise. It is this that will lead us to the hold of Rasulullah And it is this that will guarantee us a drink from the hold of Rasulullah. We will leave it at that. May Allah Ta'ala accept what I have said. If there have been any errors, because when you're talking in speed, you know, you always tend to make mistakes. So if there are any mistakes in terms of reciting, in terms of ibadat, uh, it is due to the uh, tongue being faster than the brain. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala forgive us. If there is anything good, then it is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Make dua for me, and I will make dua for you. May Allah Ta'ala bless every single one of us. And may Allah Ta'ala keep us on the path of Ahlul Sunnah. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless our relationship with the Ahlul Bayt. Salih Amen. Subhanallah.